Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to go back and talk about the relatively famous object by now, Oumuamua. This object was discovered back in 2017, uh, specifically October 2017, and since then it was in the news a few times, specifically this one time when a Harvard scientist suggested that maybe, just maybe, this is actually some sort of a alien interstellar sail. Specifically because of the way that Oumuamua was behaving as it passed through the solar system. Now today we're going to talk about a very recent analysis coming from several really prominent scientists that suggest, well, pretty much the opposite. That Oumuamua is in fact a very natural object, not an alien sail, and they give really good reasons for why it's basically just a rock coming from space. So. Let's talk about this, you can find the paper in the description below, and welcome to What The Math. I'm also posting the link to this team's website where you can find out more about them, and of course their expertise and their credentials, because I think this is really important. There's even this photo of the team that kind of tells you a little bit more about who they are. But the main goal of this particular study was to discover what exactly is this unusual object. If you don't really remember what happened, back in 2017 we discovered that there was an unusual object that was moving really fast through the solar system. It passed right there, kind of uh, close to orbit of Venus. Then, um, by the time we discovered it and by the time we started observing it, it was already on the way out. So we didn't really get to observe it that much, we didn't get to see that much, and today it currently is located roughly in this location? Okay, it's a little bit farther than I originally expected, it's sort of where the orbit of Uranus is, and it's slowly escaping our solar system, so we're unfortunately not going to be able to see what exactly is this object, or really learn much about it now because it's relatively small and it's really really far away now. We have observed it a few times and we've tried to analyze what exactly is happening around it, but even then it was already pretty far away. And because these scientists didn't really see any cometary jets like normally you would expect a typical comet to have, here's actually a really good image uh, from the comet P67 um, that shows you that these jets are quite common with comets. And because we didn't really see that, yet we observed the change in motion of the object known as Oumuamua, the scientists, or at least some scientists, started to speculate, well, maybe it is either some sort of an unusual alien sail, or maybe it's just made of some really strange materials. And so this paper goes through all of this, tries to analyze all of the suggestions and assumptions, and for the most part, in a sense, discredits the ones that are too outrageous. For example, when it comes to not seeing the um, cometary jets, the explanation here is that, well, first of all, we didn't really get to see much to begin with, there were only a few observations, and at the same time, we were only looking at really small particles expected around comets uh, that we have here in the solar system, so we didn't really look at larger particles that could have been coming out of Oumuamua. So in that sense, Oumuamua could have been actually ejecting these particles, and this could have provided acceleration that we observed, but um, we just didn't look at the right thing. At the same time, a very important property of Oumuamua that uh, would kind of contradict it being a solar sail is that this object, as we've seen through the telescopes, is actually tumbling, or in other words, it's rotating. So what we were seeing is an object that was blinking every once in a while and the luminosity of this object would go down by about 10 times. The only explanation to that is that it was doing this, it was rotating and so once in a while it would turn dark and in the other times it would turn bright. If it was a solar sail, for it to have properties that we were observing, for it to have this acceleration, the solar sail would have to be always pointed at the, um, well essentially the sun. We would be looking at the solar sail from a sort of a sideways perspective, so it wouldn't really be changing in luminosity or tumbling. And if it was spinning so much, it would not really be experiencing that much acceleration as speculated by the Harvard scientists. While at the same time we also observed its reflectivity and its color, and it seems to have relatively similar reflectivity to a typical asteroid in the solar system, while also being kind of reddish, just like you see right here in Space Engine. In other words, the best two explanations for Oumuamua's shape and for its sort of structure is that 
It's a typical rocky asteroid, very similar to what you see here. So basically like a long uh, cigar shaped object or possibly this unusual red pancake that you see on the screen. So either a pancake or a cigar shape would explain what we're observing. And the reason why it's so red and why we were able to observe this redness is actually explained by a phenomenon known as tholines. It's a concept that I've covered in another video, so you can check it out above my head. But anyway, so moving on. So we know that it's relatively small, it's tumbling, and it's kind of reddish. So what about that unusual acceleration that we're detecting? Well, that's also explained in the paper and actually pretty well because they ran simulations and they discovered that if you were to take an object like Oumuamua and pass it relatively close to the sun like you see right here, um, it would most likely lose approximately 10% of its mass that would be released and provide this acceleration that we observed and give us almost exactly the same values as we were observing in real life. So in other words, had this object lost approximately 10% of its mass, and this particular mass was used to accelerate this object, it would give us pretty much exactly the same trajectory. Now, we didn't really see that mass being ejected, but this is where another scientist from the group comes in and explains why not. And the explanation is actually pretty simple. And this is coming from Sean Raymond, um, some of whose studies I've covered previously on the channel. Um, he is famous for creating this hypothetical perfect solar system that you can check out above my head as well. But anyway, so he suggests, or actually he explains that our understanding of the cometary jets and cometary emissions is still in its infancy. We're still really just learning the um, beginnings of how all of this works and how all of the jets are created. And the fact that we didn't really see any emissions for the most part can also be explained by similar objects or similar comets in the solar system. This is one such example that's given in the paper. This is the comet known as 2P. Um, and this particular comet, when it's at the same distance as Oumuamua was, doesn't really display the cometary tail. It only starts having the cometary tail that you can kind of see right here when it's much, much closer to the sun. So in that sense, there is nothing unusual about Oumuamua not having a cometary tail or us not really observing it. It may have been there, we just didn't really see it. At the same time, today we believe that these types of interstellar visitors probably come to our solar system at least twice a year. Now, the fact that we were able to see it is, this is the reason why. It came relatively close to Earth. We actually just got really lucky that we were able to detect it. Most other objects that come from other star systems are probably invisible to us because they're too small and too far away. This paper also goes uh, through some of the details of how Oumuamua may have been created in an actual star system, and most importantly, it provides six um, very solid explanations for how it's just a natural object. And for the most part, all of these involve some sort of a catastrophic event that kicked out this object from its original star system, but most importantly, here it almost certainly means that it came from a star system that has planets. It came from a planetary system for sure. And the scientists also mentioned that um, in the future we'll be able to discover a lot more of these objects using this. This is known as Large Synoptic Survey Telescope and is going to open up in uh, 2022 in Chile and it will allow us to discover a lot more of these objects and most likely um, kind of remove the whole mystery thing about Oumuamua for once and for all. But here's the thing though, because this is a scientific paper, it also questions itself a little bit and here the scientists suggest that Okay, so in the next few years, if we discover 10 to maybe 20 of these objects and only Oumuamua stands out as this unusual weird one, then we definitely have to do a follow-up and look at it again and see what was it so special about this object that doesn't seem to occur in the other interstellar objects we've discovered. But until we discover more interstellar objects, we can't really make an assumption that this is an alien probe an alien sail or anything else that was suggested. And so even though maybe that's not the most exciting explanation for what Oumuamua was, it's most likely the most accurate and definitely the most researched, most thoroughly investigated and of course widely accepted. It's actually a really good paper to read if you do like uh, that kind of thing, so I'm, I'm posting it in the description below. Well anyway, on this note, that is the end of this update of Oumuamua, probably for a while, until we discover a new interstellar object that is going to explain this a little bit more. Until then though, please subscribe if you still haven't, 
share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences and wants to learn more about the universe in general, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.